Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 10 of Trend Talks Threat Research. I'm your host, John Clay, VP of Threat Intelligence here at Trend Micro. And this week, I wanted to talk about a article that we published, and we'll link to it in the show notes, uh, about the usage of AI by adversaries and whether there's hype or if it's actually real. Our researchers have been looking into this for quite some time. We published a blog last year, late last year, about this, uh, but they wanted to give an update on where things are at this point. And, you know, based on the information that we have and the analysis we have, looking at the underground markets, what their offerings, what services their offerings in these areas, also what the chatter is in the forums. Uh, so we infiltrate these forums and look at what are they talking about and stuff. Some of the key takeaways that we've got, adoption rates are gonna be low. Uh, we don't expect really the use of uh, generative AI and AI by adversaries for another 12 to 24 months, um, mainly because the current tools, uh, tool sets are working just fine for them. Uh, compared to last year, they've kind of abandoned uh, any attempt at training a real LLM model Instead, uh, they're mostly focused on jailbreaking existing models that are available to them, like OpenAI uh, and others. And then we're finally starting to see the emergence of actual criminal deepfakes uh, and deepfake services being offered in the underground. So that's one area that seems to be growing more uh, than, than what we've seen. So a couple of things, uh, again, less training by, of, of actual LLMs, uh, private LLMs themselves. They're just jailbreaking. Um, we're seeing a lot more of this activity by them where they want to jailbreak the, uh, the existing LLMs. And they're doing in, that in a number of ways. Um, they're also, uh, we're also seeing a lot of advertisements in the underground for jailbreaking services. So it's jailbreak as a service is an offering that's coming up quite a bit. Uh, there's a number of applications or services being offered. Escape GPT is one of them. Black Hat GPT, um, Loop GPT are a couple of them. And, and then also we're seeing a, a number of places where are actually offering a whole slew of different services. Um, Uncensored GPT, unfiltered GPT, uh, black hat programming, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So all of these are are happening out there <clears throat> as well. Um, I would say, you know, the criminal uses of, of LLMs to support the development of malware and malicious tools is one area. Um, it's not unlike uh, where they, they spread that kind of information in the past. Uh, but we're going to pro probably start seeing more and more of the jailbreaking to try to develop malware. Because uh, as you, you, most of you probably know, if I try to create a malware through ChatGPT, it's going to deny me. Uh, they have the security controls in place. So criminals are constantly looking at how can I get around that? A lot of forum discussions around this topic. Uh, so how do I jailbreak ChatGPT? How do I jailbreak the other LLMs that are out there? Um, they are going to use it to uh, improve their social engineering tricks. So LLMs are very good at taking you, you asking it to create content for you, and it can create that content in a very uh, good manner. So phishing emails, for example, business email compromise, uh, these types of attacks will probably see more usage of the generative AI tools in those areas. Um, but uh but outside of that, um, probably not. Deep fakes, though, definitely merging. Um, in fact, we see prices ranging from anywhere from $10 per image to $500 per minute of video. Uh, a lot of these videos are getting good. One of the areas that's interesting that we are seeing um, is actually common knowledge that, that banks and cryptocurrencies uh, have to obtain proof that an account that, uh, an account owner is a real person. And we're starting to see where services are being offered to take that aspect and, and criminalize it. So what they're doing is they're, they're taking fake IDs with an image and they're creating a deep fake image of that person so that when you, when you um, go to your bank or your financial institution to create an account, they'll give you that information. So they'll hold up a picture of the ID with a picture of themselves, even though that person is totally fake. 
this is an area that we think is going to cause some challenges for the financial institutions out there. They're going to have to deal with this definitely in the future here. Um, but again, deep fakes is another area we can probably see, probably in use in, in business email compromise attacks, potentially. Virtual kidnapping, although right now virtual kidnapping is being used mostly voice uh, audio deep fakes versus uh, video deep fakes. Uh, so we'll see that as well. So again, to conclude this, um, why are criminals not adopting AI as quickly as we, as maybe the, the news and media has, has portrayed? Uh, one, they want an easy life. Uh, the criminals always want to, to make it easy. They don't want to spend a lot of money. Um, it could, does cost money to utilize these uh uh, LLMs, uh, but their reward to risk ratio is uh, for criminal activity is pretty high. So they um, they want to not invest in a lot of stuff. It is new technology to them, so they have to learn it just like all of us have to learn it. They don't want to spend time doing that because again, if the old if the new technologies are not merely good but better than the existing tool set, they're not going to use it. So um, right now we don't think it's going to happen. Uh, finally, it's important to understand criminals favor evolution over revolution. Um, so because of the high stakes of their activities, any unknown elements introduced uh, new risk factors for them. And they don't want that risk, right? They are very risk averse. Uh, so uh, we definitely, like I mentioned earlier, probably don't expect to see anything happening from for anywhere from 12 to 24 months in this area. So if you want to check out a little more detail about what we what we found, feel free to click on the link to the article and you can read all the information about it there. We'll continue to update more uh, as we learn more things about what the adversaries are doing with AI and we'll keep you informed uh, via either articles or blogs or whatever it might be. So thanks, everybody. Uh, again, episode 10 of Trend Talks Threat Research. I'll be back in a couple of weeks to focus on another uh, aspect of trend micro research that we've published recently. Everyone have a safe uh, day and take care and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.